Hi, Renee Flamont here. One of the things that I think of very often, and I'm just curious to know what other people think, is is it worse to be flat out ignored or is it worse to be insulted all the time? And I was wondering, I often think about that because those are two tactics that they use, yes? So the narcissist will use both those tactics over and over again to manipulate the situation. Is it worse to feel invisible or to seen by your narcissist? If, they, if you're invisible, that's pretty bad. They're going to ignore you no matter what you do. Um, the emptiness of feeling invisible, not being seen at all is horrendous. The emptiness of that is horrendous. Nothing is worse than not being seen. Ignored. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe insults are worse. That's the question, so I can't say nothing is worse. But it's pretty bad when you're ignored and you're not seen at all. You try to make yourself into something that he or she may see or comment on or be happy about and just nothing. You get nothing, nothing, nothing. I know a woman who's going through this. No matter what she does, her husband doesn't see her. Narcissist or not, it's an awful, awful feeling. And being too seen by your narcissist is scary. The criticism, the details of the insults can be mind-boggling. The pattern, the timing of the insults, the regularity of the insults, uh, the half compliment they throw at you so they can check off the box that they gave you one. And when I say the timing of the insults, I mean, isn't it usually before some big thing? And I talked about that before. This is, both of these things are ways to control you and how they want you to feel about yourself. We know this, yes? Invisible will keep you in your place, they believe. Insults will do the same. They can't have us getting too big for our britches. They can't have us getting too big for our britches. They wouldn't know what to do with that. If, if you walked around the earth thinking, you know, you were okay. I'll just go with okay. Not even all that in a bucket of chicken. They don't even want you walking around earth thinking that you're all right. Because who knows where that may lead for them. That may lead for them that you have the confidence to talk to other people. It could mean that you now have the confidence to join a book club, a cooking class, a painting class. Now what happens at these places, these things? There are other people with common interests. Now what? Now you might meet someone with a common interest in your painting class or cooking class. Or you know what I mean? They can't have that. All of those things that you do stem from confidence in yourself that you've built up enough to go and do those things. If they keep you down by making you feel invisible, you're not going to have the confidence to suddenly be like, I'm going to take a cooking class. You're going to be downtrodden. You're going to be, your spirit is going to be smushed into wanting to do anything. We all know how it feels. It's terrible feeling. You just want to crawl into a hole and not see anybody. And very often times that's what happens, isn't it? When they make you feel invisible or they insult you all the time because you're too seen and they notice every little thing about you. Too seen means they notice every little thing about you and they're going to tell it to you and it's probably going to be negative. Both of those things make you want to crawl into a hole and not see or talk to anybody. You're mortifyingly embarrassed at the state of your relationship. You're absolutely torn apart by how they make you feel about yourself. That doesn't make for the best company. And then you don't want to, no, I'm busy today. Thanks. Uh, maybe next week. Suddenly you're saying no to friends to have lunch. 
And before you know it, you're isolated in the house alone because you don't want to bring your company around other people because you don't know how to be because you know you're off because they're making you feel off at home. And you know that your friends will see it. Your family will see it. And it's hard enough to get to be on with your friends and family when you need to be. You don't want to add any extra days. So then that makes you feel bad. Because now you said no to somebody and you could have gone to lunch. And you do miss that person. And you do want to see them. But you just don't know how you'd navigate through a lunch when he spent all yesterday making you feel invisible or all today up until the lunch making you feel ugly or, or dumb or whatever insults they throw at you. It's about control. And so I'm here to advise that we take back the control. Take it back. Stop doing whatever it is you're doing for the narcissist because it doesn't matter. Now, that doesn't mean let yourself go into oblivion and you don't practice self-care, right? Because that's something you should do for, well, yourself. It's self-care. You can make yourself look like a traffic-stopping knockout every single day if you want. For yourself. Every single day if you want. But don't do it for them. Because it's getting you nowhere and your effort is going unnoticed and that is going to make you feel frustrated. So then you might say, well, then why bother? Well, don't do it for him. Do it for yourself. If you make yourself feel a certain way every day, that empowerment goes a long way. And let me tell you something. I don't want anyone to keep being directed or influenced by someone who has nothing nice to say. They don't deserve that. So if you are getting yourself together nicely every single day, hoping, hoping, hoping they're going to notice you and say something and tell you you look nice and, and they don't, stop being influenced by them. Do it for only your enjoyment your love of dressing up, your love of putting makeup on. Make yourself look like a knockout and go out and have lunch with your friends. And on your way out the door, maybe he'll be like, oh, well, don't you look nice? Now you're not with me. It might come out something like that, like a half, like a backwards compliment. Thank you. Bye. You don't have to explain yourself. And you don't have to do it again. If you're going to be home alone with him all day tomorrow and you don't feel like it, don't do it. If you feel like it for yourself, do it. And a tip that I want to say, I read this once years ago. A woman wrote a book or something or an article. Does anyone remember this? And I've tried it and it works. If you find yourself feeling invisible or too seen, picked on even, then my God, isn't it time to shed that? In order to shed that, I'm telling you something. Wear red lipstick every day for a month straight. It powers you up. Now, I know a woman who hates red lipstick. Doesn't matter who it's on. She hates it on herself. She hates it on other people. She hates it on Marilyn Monroe. She just hates red lipstick. She hates it. She, just, she hates it. She just won't do it. And that's fine. I didn't tell her to do it. But I just know. I've known her my whole life. And it's just a thing she has. She's like, ah, oh, I hate red lipstick. I like red lipstick. I'm French. It's a nice French thing. French, red lipstick, white face. I love that look, right? If you put on red lipstick, it is a very bold color. If you do it for a month straight every day and wear red lips, I am telling you it is impossible not to feel powerful when you have red lipstick on. And I can't remember the article or the book or the lady that said it. It was years ago. And I practiced it. I did it. If you look back at the beginning of the videos, maybe month one, month two, month three, there was like a whole month straight I had red lipstick on. And I mean, I like red lipstick, so it's not always for that reason. But in the beginning of the videos, that is why. I'm about to turn to red again. I wear red for a while and then I go to something else. But in the beginning of the videos, month one, two, three, whenever that was, I remember saying to myself, I'm wearing red lipstick for like a month. It helps your spirit. It's a very strong, powerful message. And I'm home. I'm not out. I put red lipstick on at home. 
And I said, I'm going to wear real. Every time I look at myself in the mirror, you run to the bathroom. You see yourself in the mirror. You catch a glimpse of yourself. I have red lipstick on. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's empowering. Or if for you, you're, you're the person that hates red lipstick, do your hair every day. Wear high heels for yourself. A pair of boots you bought that you haven't had to, been able to wear because we've been... Wear them. Put them on. Anything that you can do to empower yourself and get yourself away from feeling either invisible or insulted is what I want you to do. And I don't want you to orchestrate looks or things about yourself for someone that's not appreciating it anyway. Because they see you knocking yourselves out. Of course they do. So that they have a chance to ignore you. They see that you knocked yourself out. You don't think they see that you got dressed and that you have makeup on and that you did your hair and that they know they're not saying anything to you. They're doing it to bother you. That's calculated manipulation is what that is. To control your mood for that day, that event, that happening, that evening. They're ignoring you. They're insulting you. How are you going to go on and have a good time if your partner does those things? It's manipulation. So stop doing it for them. But don't stop doing it. Because maybe you need to do it for yourself. And just look at that. That's all I'm saying. The gift of you being your best self should be something you give to yourself. No more to them. If they're not appreciating it anyway, then don't give that gift to them. They don't get to see your best self. Why would you go through any effort for them if they're not... I mean, and that's what I mean. But see, that's tricky. Because then a lot of women end up ignoring themselves and not doing anything to themselves. And then they get into a rut where they feel terrible about themselves. So the narcissist succeeded. That's where the red lipstick comes in. Red lipstick won't let you get lazy. Because you'll look at yourself and go, Ooh, I look like done, half done. Maybe I should put a different shirt on. Or just for yourself. Every day that you feel empowered and beautiful from the inside is what counts. Let's not get confused. This isn't a superficial video, but it is talking about the outer appearance a little bit. It has to happen from the inside. Sometimes we need a little help to get there to remind us about the inside. So you put on a bold red lip or, or a shoe you bought or a shirt you love. You love. You love. Not him. Don't let him have that power anymore. He doesn't deserve that, does he? Or she? Why? You're going to put on a dress that you know he loves only so that you can come out and he's going to go, you look fine, let's go. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready, let's go. Yeah, you look nice. <gasps> it's like the worst thing in the world. You spend you know, a half hour getting ready, or maybe for you it's three hours. For me it's fast because I don't do anything to my hair and I don't, you know what I mean? But, and then they don't say anything? No. No, stop cold. For him, stop cold. Stop. Just stop. Deck yourself out when you go out with your girlfriends. Deck yourself out when you go to see your family. Deck yourself out for yourself. Deck yourself out to go to your book club. Don't knock yourself out for someone for whom you are invisible or for whom you are just someone to insult. That is absolutely unacceptable. And I want you to take that power back for yourself. That's it. Chin up.